Greetings, everyone. This is going to be a quick video to walk us through an exercise from Croy chapter 5 in the Septuagint sentences. This is number 3. And you will see that this sentence is taken from what is called Four Kingdoms 2019. Quick word about that. What is Four Kingdoms? I don't have Four Kingdoms in my Bible. That's the same as Second Kings chapter 20, verse 19. In your English Bible, your English Bible is taken from the Hebrew Bible. So this is one of the cases where there is a different chapter and number uh, re recorded in the Septuagint than there is in the Masoretic text, that is the Hebrew Bible, from which our English Bibles are derived. And if you need a refresher on that, look at Croy paragraph 8, which is pages 5 and 6 in my book, and he talks about the different titles of books and the different chapters. With that out of the way, let's look at this in Greek. It's a short verse. Kai apen ezekias pros ezion. The names are going to look funny. If you sound them out, you'll guess what name you're looking at. Agathos halagos koreu. To translate these Septuagint sentences, especially at the beginning of the year, there are going to be a lot of words we don't know. So in this first phrase, I think you only know one word, and that is Kai. And for a pen and as a kiosk and so on, you'll have to look them up in the vocabulary that he gives at the end of the chapter. As a reminder, you do not have to memorize those extra vocabulary words. They're just there to make it possible to translate actual sentences as they occur in the Septuagint or in the New Testament. So he gives a running vocabulary list with the exact forms that we see. So a pen is actually the past tense of Lego, but he just lists it under a pen. All right, so this says, and he said, who did? Ezekias. Hezekiah, pros means to, Zion means Isaiah. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, and here's what he said. Agathos halagos kuriu. You might already know what that says, but we're just going to break it down for practice. Because by breaking it down, you'll be able to lose, you will be able to use the same principles to make sense of more difficult sentences. So, agathos and then halagos kuriu. Agathos, you will see, is one of our new words. It's an adjective. And as an adjective, it can have masculine, feminine, or neuter endings. And this chart is one I think you should practice writing out, saying aloud, memorizing. I think it helps to use colored pencils and to think of the endings as different by gender. In any event, in this case, we want to determine, and with any adjective, we want to first determine what is its gender, number, and case. So we know what noun in the sentence it's going with. So of all the possible endings, we start narrowing in that it's one of the masculines, that it's a singular, and that it is in fact the nominative. So we have a masculine nominative singular, agathos. Something is being described as good. And now we need to search our sentence for a nominative masculine singular noun. Our search is not terribly difficult, because there's only one noun, and it is masculine singular, and it looks a heck of a lot alike. That will often be the case, but not always. So, halagos, the word, agrees with agathos. Let's put the whole sentence together. Agathos halagos kuriu. Let's just translate this last part. Halagos is nominative, the word. Kuriu is genitive. So we have the word of the Lord, and then we have agathos, which means good, and there's only one thing left to attend to, and that is to ask, is agathos a predicate adjective, or is it an attributive adjective? To figure that out, we ask ourselves, does the definite article, the word the, 
does it occur in a position touching the adjective? And in this case, the answer is, so we're looking right here, there's a blank. Those are empty brackets. There is no word the, ha, right there. And if there is not the definite article touching the adjective, then it is a predicate adjective. And a very simplistic way to think of it for the sake of learning to translate is that right where that gap is in Greek, we insert the verb to be in English. So here we have the word of the Lord, and we have good. And because there's no the with good, we add the verb to be in English. Because this is Greek's way of showing that agathos is a predicate, and in English, most of the time when we have a predicate, we use the verb to be. So, Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord is good.